in a previous video, I showed you how to collect coins. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can lose coins by creating a damage or hurt area. If you didn't see the last video, I'll leave a link in the description to it. But I'll do a quick recap for those who just want to see how to set up the damage area. I have an event controller that is setting up two signals, coin collected and coin dropped. I have a game controller that is keeping track of the player's total coins. It has two correlating functions. It has coin collected, which is simply adding the value passed in to the total coins, and then emitting the coin collected signal with the total coins passed. It is emitting this signal, coin collected. And then there's also a coin drop function, which is subtracting the value passed in from the total coins. We're first checking to see if we need to update the UI. If the total coins is already at zero, we're not going to update the UI. And then we're just doing a check to make sure we're not taking more coins from the player than the player has, because we're not going to allow them to go to negative. And then if their coin balance did change, we'll event the signal, coin dropped, passing in the new total coins. In our coin UI, in the top left corner, we're going to display a little coin icon along with the number of coins they currently have. Whenever they lose a coin, we're going to pop up this animation with the subtract symbol and then a spinning coin to show that they lost a coin. In our coin UI script, we have a reference to our label, which is the number of coins the player currently has, and then to our animated sprite coin. This animated sprite is simply a spinning coin from the assets. I will also leave a link in the description to all the assets I'm using. And then as a child of the coin, I have a label that is just the negative symbol. If you click on the label and go to the inspector, it's just the negative symbol, and then I changed it to the color red. So let's walk through this script real quick. On ready, we're setting the coin visibility to false, which again is this spinning animated coin with the negative symbol. So those will be hidden by default. We are connecting to our coin collected and coin drop signals. When a coin is collected, we're simply updating the label text to the new value that is passed. Remember in our game controller, we're emitting the signal coin collected and we're passing the total coins. Likewise, on event coin dropped, we're doing something similar. We're catching the new value of the coins, which we're passing here, the new total coins after we have subtracted. We're setting the coin visibility, which is a spinning coin and the negative symbol to true. We're updating the label text for our current coin value. We're gonna wait one second, and then we're gonna reset the coin visibility to false. So in our tile map or tile map layer, I built a level just like you normally would. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add another tile map layer or another tile map node if you're using an older version. I'm gonna call this one damage area, and I'm just gonna move it up by the other one. Now for this new tile map layer, we need to add a new tile set just like we normally would. So click new tile set and then click on it, and then tile set down here so that we can add our new tile set. I'm gonna add this one here. So you want to go ahead and add whatever tile set has the damage areas that you want your player to get hurt by. So for instance, if it's lava or spikes or something like that. In this case, I have a thorn sprite on this sprite sheet. So what I'm going to do is back in the inspector, make sure your damage area tile map is selected, and I'm going to add a new physics layer. Now I want our player to be able to differentiate the different tile maps that it's colliding with. So I'm going to set the damage area on a different collision layer. So I'm going to take it off one, and for this example, I'm just going to use three. You can use whichever one works for you and then I don't need a collision mask. So now back in the tile set below here, make this a little bigger, I'm gonna click on select, select our damage area tile set that we're using. Like I said, I'm using the thorns here. And just like before, we're gonna add a collision area. You can click these three dots, reset the default shape, or just hit F. So now I can click on tile map and select the thorn here and start drawing where I want our thorns to be. So I'm just gonna put them at the bottom of these values here. All right, the next thing we need to do is go to whatever player you're using, and I need to add a hitbox to mine because I currently don't have one. So just search Area 2D, and then inside the Area 2D, you want to add a collision shape. So I'm going to rename this Area 2D to Hitbox. And then it needs a collision shape, so I'm just going to use the capsule. And I'm actually going to recolor this to red to differentiate between the two different collisions. And then make sure your hitbox or your Area 2D that is going to represent your hitbox is selected. And then over in the inspector, come to collision. And then remember, we got to update our mask. So remember, our damage area is on mask 3. So we don't need to look at 1, just 3. And if we come back to the scene, make sure your hitbox is selected, and we're going to add a signal. So hitbox, and then over on the inspector, click on node, signals, and we're going to do body entered. And then we're going to set it to your player script. And all we're going to do here is we're going to use the game controller that I showed you earlier, and we're going to do coin dropped. And then we can set the value that we want the player to lose when they hit this area, which in this case will just be one. 
So now we can go to our level and I can show you what this looks like. You can see at the top left here, we have a nice coin icon with the number of coins we currently have. The coins are spinning as we expect. And then if we collect these three, we now have three coins. And if we fall on these thorns, you can see we get the nice spinning icon with the minus symbol showing that we lost a coin. And we can go all the way to zero, but it won't let us go negative. But we can come back over here. Yep, grab these three coins, and we got three coins again. And just like before, you can see you can repeat this over and over. Well, I suppose 